So today we're going to do the handover video on this Bursner Lazeo TD680G. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. Before I start today's video I'd like to say that the vehicle hasn't had a, um, a valid as of yet. We're just wanting to get this video done and out to you before your collection date. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you'll notice that you've got your fill up points here with your ad blue as well as your diesel point. When your ad blue is running low, you'll get a warning sign on your dash that you just need to top it up. And the same thing for, obviously, the diesel. Opening up the passenger door, you'll notice that you've got your bonnet release catch, which is just on this side, on the passenger side. I'll just release the bonnet. Uh, and as you can see, on your windows fitted to this vehicle, you've got Remis cab blinds. To operate these, all you'll need to do is simply pinch the tab, pull out like so, and release the blind. Lead the blind from the bottom and let that connect via the magnetic strip. You've got the same again on the front window and the other window on the driver's side. Taking these back, just simply pull them off from the magnetic strip and again lead from the bottom. That will just allow them to reach back into place and connect ready for transit. Now as a rule of thumb with the motorhome, if anything feels like it's being forced, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, so just take your time to obviously uh, evaluate what you're doing. You don't want to force anything. You'll also notice within the door sill that you've got your tyre pressures, which are just printed here. Moving to the front of the vehicle, you can see I've just popped the bonnet open for you. The main things that you need to know underneath here is if you're ever going to jump start the vehicle. You jump, uh, if you jump in the vehicle, all you'll need to do is, as indicated by the sticker up here, you need to connect your negative terminal onto here and your positive terminal just connects under this tab there's actually a little plus sign on this tab here flick this tab up and you can connect your positive onto there as i say they are the main things to know but just to point out a couple more things you've got your engine oil here you've then got your brake disc fluid which is directly above that along with your engine coolant and then right within there you've got your washer fluid for the front windscreen Moving to the side of the vehicle, you can see that you've got an external socket here. You will need a 230 volt plug adapter to obviously connect into there as currently it's set up for continental plug. And you can see there is an external aerial point here along with a 12 volt feed if you ever wanted to connect up your telly um, to your aerial. Uh, it doesn't come as standard like that. The, most, the majority of customers use this as an external socket, um, but we can wire this in to the aerial if you're having one fitted. Next, you can see in here you've got your external barbecue point. Of course, you'll need your, your gas to, to be turned on for this to operate. But once your gas is turned on at the bottle, that will flow through the vehicle. And all you'll need to do is turn this, um, this red cap here and that will release the gas, allowing you to use an external barbecue. Now, you'll have a little Jubilee clip that you'll require that will feed into the bottom here of that nozzle. That will then connect to your barbecue point via a hose and a Jubilee clip. And as I say, that will then allow you to use your external barbecue point. Directly next to the barbecue point is a vent. As you can see, it says Trimmer on here, and this is for the boiler. Uh, it does get quite hot, this, because this is, in essence, the, the vehicle's chimney. So don't ever hang anything on here. Just give this a bit of a wide berth. Uh, you don't want to burn yourself on the vent. Next up, you can see that you've got your habitation door. We'll go into there shortly. Uh, and next to that, you'll notice you've got your fridge vents. Now, with your fridge vents, it's important to know that this is obviously where the fridge pulls its air from. So what we recommend, if it is a really sunny day um, and you've got the sun beating down on this side of the vehicle, just to allow the fridge to work a little bit more efficiently, you can pull the awning out or keep this area in shade and that will just, as I say, allow the fridge to run a little bit more efficiently uh, in them hotter months. Uh, you can also get fridge vents for these, um, or fridge covers rather, for the vents, <laughs> which uh, they just pop off and the vents, uh, sorry, the covers slide behind the vent and then clip back into place for when you're storing the van. Next up at the back, you've got your cassette locker toilet. And as you can see, with the locker door open, it'll gain you access to the cassette. 
To remove this, simply pull up on the orange handle and slide out towards you. Before doing so, however, please ensure that the blade on the toilet is closed. I'll show you where that is done for, uh, from rather when we're on the inside of the vehicle, but please ensure that that is closed. If it is open, that will connect to the cassette. So when you go to remove this, it can potentially jam and get stuck uh, and ultimately break. So please ensure that that is closed. And as I say, I'll show you how that can be done when we move on to the inside of the vehicle. Providing that's closed, as I say, pull up on this orange tab and slide out like so. Grab it by the handle and to empty this, all you've got to do is turn out the funnel, remove the grey cap on the end and using the orange button on the back, that will release an internal vacuum which will allow you to empty the contents of the cassette. Once you've done that, you can use some fresh water, fill this up, give it a swill out and if you're using blue fluid you can use this grey cap on the end here it's got a little measurement on there um, to put it straight into there and then straight into the cassette once you've done that this can go back on slide the funnel back into position and the cassette is ready to go back in its locker you will also notice you've got an orange button here um, or a valve rather this actually turns it's like a switch and this is what makes contact with the blade and that I've just spoken about. This allows you to open and close the cassette and as I say, makes contact with the blade when you're on the inside of the vehicle. Um, this should always stay in this position. You should never need to turn this. If this is off by, you know, slightly, the cassette will not slide in um, back into position. So please ensure that this is always in this position. There should be no need for you to, uh, to turn that or anything. Once it's emptied, all you need to do, lift it back up offer it back up to the locker and slide it into position and as you can see that orange handle has then just slotted in nicely and it's ready for transit. Next up in your garage you can see you've got your two carpets, you've also got your jack which is just back there and this vehicle has got an external shower hence why you've got uh, a loose shower head at the end of the garage there. Got a couple of your burster packs as well and this is your tyre inflation kit. Now in the garage you've got a 230 volt electric plug please bear in mind that your three pin plugs will only work when you're connected to 230 volt mains electric so when you're on your campsite and you're plugged in these will work not a problem um, but obviously if you're wild camping these are not going to work so just bear that in mind you've also got a light in here and finally right up at the top you can see that you've got your awning winder handle now for your awning what I'll do is I'll send you a separate video showing you how that awning operates um, but just bear in mind if it is a windy day uh, I personally recommend not using the awning as you can appreciate it is like having a massive sail on the side of the van if you get any wind or anything underneath it a sudden gust could potentially rip the awning from the van damaging your van and also others um, so if it's windy I don't recommend using the awning um, one thing as well is it can be used in rain, uh, but you do need to bear in mind that if it is raining um, and it gets caught in the rain, at some point when you have a dry spell, you need to pull that awning out just to allow it to dry. You don't want it to sit wet for a long period of time as eventually the canvas will begin to decay uh, and rot. So just bear that in mind. Moving to the back of the vehicle, you can see that you've got your reversing camera, uh, camera which is right up at the top. And moving to the other side, you've also got another locker into your garage. Just opening this up as well, you can also see that you've got a piece of wood here that clips into the side. This will allow you to store things on this and act as a platform if you don't want to store anything upright. Now, as you've seen in the garage, uh, you've got an external shower on this vehicle and this is where it's located. Um, now, to obviously hook the shower head in, it just uses a bayonet fitting again, similar to your gas point, that clips in and then you can decide the temperature whether you want it warm or cold through here. You've got an isolator button here which will activate the pump. Um, you will need the pump on and then to select that for it to pull through uh, and then you can use your external shower. Next up, you've got your gas locker. I'll open that up for you now. With the gas locker open you can see you've got provisions for two gas bottles and um, this will actually fit a 13 kg bottle in each uh, on each side um, i recommend using six kg bottles personally it's a little bit easier to get them in and out of the vehicle uh, and you can see up at the top here you've got your gas regulator all you'll need is a pigtail which comes with the vehicle which can connect onto this um, this ga gas regulator here which will then feed into the bottle uh, and then you can 
turn your gas on. Now please ensure that when you're traveling, your gas is turned off, because if you're involved in a collision, as you can imagine, it is, uh, you know, very dangerous, highly flammable. Um, but then when you're stationary on site, you can of course turn your gas on at the bottle and let that flow through. Now at the bottom of the gas uh, locker door, you'll also notice there's a sticker here. And this brings us on to your first drain down point. Now you have three main drain down points in the vehicle. You've got your fresh water drain down point, you've got your waste water drain down point, and you've got your boiler drain down point. Your waste, uh, uh, sorry, your fresh and your boiler drain down point are located at the front here. Uh, and that leaves us with this one, which is your waste water. Now, as you can see underneath it, you can see your outlet for your discharge is here and you'll notice there's this metal rod which is just located uh, next to the pipe now to empty this all you'll need is this handle uh, and all that does is that connects onto here and then it'll allow you to twist it and turn it um, to obviously where you need to to open it and close it um, and that will obviously empty the waste water tank now when you're on site there'll be a big grid that you can drive over all you'll need to do is drive over that, line it up with a tank, and then using this, that slots onto there, turn that handle down, and that will empty all of the waste. Once you've done that, and you've drained down the majority of the water on site, what I recommend is leaving your tank open, and this goes for the boiler and the fresh water tank, as that will ensure that all that residual water that is, that is, some, you know, that is located in the van makes its way out of the vehicle as you're traveling home. One final thing about the wastewater tank before I move on, um, you've got to bear in mind that this tank is actually external, um, so this could potentially freeze, it's under slung in the vehicle, um, so it could potentially freeze if you're not using, uh, sorry, when, whilst you're using the vehicle in cold weather. The boiler and the fresh water won't as they are on board the vehicle and they'll only freeze if you freeze, but the wastewater tank can potentially freeze. With that in mind, what I'd recommend is leaving this tank open and just simply use a bucket Put that underneath it and just allow all the waste water to drain simply out of the waste water tank and into the bucket and that will ensure that you don't get any water that is in that tank that could potentially freeze during them colder months next up you can see that you've got your mains hookup point so you'll need obviously your two uh, your 230 volt mains lead that connects into there and that will supply the vehicle with 230 volt mains electric and like i mentioned before that will allow you to use your 230 volt plugs and will also get your leisure battery up to 100 percent and finally on the outside of the vehicle brings us to the convenience locker uh, as i mentioned before this is where your fresh water tank is housed along with your boiler drain down points and um, so firstly filling up your water you've got your tank here this is 120 liters of fresh water to fill this up, simply remove the blue cap on the top here, like so. And then in this vehicle, you've got an overspill kit um, cap that just simply slots onto there. And when you've got your food grade hose pipe, that will allow you to fill the tank up. And if there's any splashback or any water that trickles, it'll trickle out of the vehicle instead of going on the pipe work on the inside. Once you've done that, simply take that off, store that in the vehicle, and then you can reattach the blue cap like so. Um, now personally I don't recommend drinking out of the fresh water tank. Um, I personally would, if you're drinking water, just take bottled water. Uh, you're fine obviously if you're boiling it, um, but I personally wouldn't drink directly at the, out of the tank. But please ensure that when you are filling this tank up, you use a food grade hose pipe. That will just ensure that you don't get any build up of bacteria in the pipe, which could potentially make its way into the fresh water tank. Now if you want to clean this tank, all you've got to do is remove this uh, this red cap. Uh, before you do so, please ensure, of course, there's no water in the tank. Um, but providing that, remove this red cap and you can clean the inside. But as I say, because you're not drinking out of the tank and all that really ends up in here is fresh water, you don't really need to clean it that often. Once a year uh, at max is oil it will require. And then finally, you've got your drain down points for your... Uh, boiler which is just located here now I'll come back to draining down this tank just in a minute um, but as I mentioned your drain down points for your boiler are located here now this vehicle has got a frost protection valve on it what that will do is it will when it gets to a certain temperature this piece of plastic here has got some solution in there which will react to the temperature so when it gets to a certain temperature it will trip and dump all the water out 
Um, if you want to do that manually, um, so say for example that you're using it in some months, obviously it's not going to freeze, so it won't it won't dump the, man, uh, the water. All you've got to do is simply turn the diamond like so. A blue tab on the side sticks out, and then you can see it begins to dump the water. To seal this unit, all you need to do is turn the diamond like so and press the blue tab on the side just like so, so it's then flush with that plastic. Now, as I mentioned, this is a frost protection valve, so when it does get to a certain temperature, it will dump the water, uh, but it will only, it will, really, will only do that when you're uh, using the vehicle in very cool climates. Now, if you're using the van, don't worry about it dumping the water because obviously this area is heated. Um, but what ten, uh, tends to happen if you've not used the vehicle in a while and you come to fill it up uh, for the first time and it's extremely cold You'll go to fill the tank up and you'll go to close this valve So you'll do what I've done there turn the diamond and you'll go to press that blue button on the side in uh, And what it'll do is it'll keep pinging out that button It won't allow you to seal the unit and it's because it's reacting to temperature. It's a fail-safe basically so if that does happen, what you need to do, you need to jump on the inside of the vehicle, you'll need to turn your vehicle heating on, not the water heating, the vehicle heating, and that will heat this area up. You can see that this pipe is located here to heat this area up, and after about 30 minutes, it'll be up to temperature, so you can then press that blue, um, blue uh, button in and seal the unit. And as I mentioned, this is here just as a failsafe, and this is directly linked to the boiler. Now you will also notice there's actually a fourth rain down point which is just at the back there. Um, as you can see it's that yellow valve. Uh, now this drains everything from the boiler beyond. So, so basically all your taps and everything like that. Now to drain this all you need to do is simply flick that yellow valve up like so. And you can see that begins to drain everything from the boiler beyond. To seal it flick that down and that will seal the unit and of course you'll need to seal that as well as the boiler when you are using um, the vehicle now finally the final drain down point is obviously located back here on your wastewater tank uh, sorry your fresh water tank what am I saying fresh water tank and that can be done through this knob here so all you've got to do with this is simply turn it like so until the water is pouring out just turn that back and seal it. Now you have two settings with this as indicated by the sticker. As I mentioned, this tank will hold 120 litres. Now if you wanted to, you can drain the entire tank down to 20 litres as a quick drain down point. So say for example, you wanna have water in the vehicle uh, and you're moving off to site, you can drain the entire tank down to 20 litres. They recommend the manufacturer that you travel with only 20 litres um, of water in the vehicle due to payload and weight distribution. So if you're doing that, you've got the quick drain down point through here. Now, if you want to drain the entire tank, all you've got to do is keep turning this valve. There's a little lug that you get to. When you hit that lug, that's the point where it will drain only to 20 litres. If you keep turning past that lug, you'll hear a slight click that will then drain the entire 120 litres. So it depends on obviously your situation. If you're moving off site and that is it, uh, you're going home, drain the entire thing down. But then if you're moving on to another site and you want to keep a bit of water in the tank, you can drain it down to 20 litres should you need to. Now that concludes the outside of the vehicle. We're now gonna move on to the inside. Righty, oh, so we're now on the inside of the vehicle. Coming through the habitation door, just on the left, you've got your control panel. So your main control panel is this here, and then next to that, you've got your Truma panel, and that is for your heating. So firstly, we'll go over the control panel uh, for the lights and the electrics. You've got your main isolator button here, which as you can see, will turn on and off everything in the vehicle, uh, including your lights. Uh, it will not obviously turn these lights off. These are your porch lights. You can turn these off just using these buttons here. Now coming back up, if I turn this isolator back on, you can see that we're all ready uh, and ready to go. So firstly, you've got your indicator button. So you've got your level for your habitation uh, battery. If I click that and hold that in, it will tell us that we're, we're not far off 100% really with that. Now the only way to get this to 100% is to be plugged in. Clearly I'm not plugged in at the moment. So this is uh, just telling me what the leisure battery re is reading uh, without being plugged in and you can see we're not far off the top there below is your vehicle battery level i click that at a similar point 
And on the other side, you've get, then got your wastewater uh, level. Click that with nothing in the wastewater tank at the moment. And then up at the top is your fresh water level. Hold that in. You can see we're, we're not far off 100% there. And then finally, you've got a little button on this side. This will activate your pump. Now, obviously, you don't want to activate the pump without any water in the uh, system. Because if you run the pump for a prolonged period, it will eventually burn out. So only run the pump when you've got water in the vehicle. Now, once you've got uh, water in the vehicle and you've turned your pump on, you can come to each of your taps. Um, that includes every single tap, like your shower, your bathroom sink, and obviously your kitchen sink. And all you'll need to do is turn your tap on and turn it to hot. What that will do is it will pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and then out of the tap. Now it will spurt and splutter initially as it's priming and purging the system and then when it's running steadily you've primed your system for your hot water. Now it will take a little bit of going, uh, get, um, it will take a bit of doing that uh, as you can appreciate it's feeding it from the fresh water tank into the boiler which holds 10 litres and then out of the tap. So naturally it's going to take a bit of time to get it out. Um, but just be patient with it, as I say, when it's running steadily, your primary system for your hot water. When you've done that, flick it over to cold and do the exact same. It'll pull through and when it's running steadily, your primary system for your cold water. It's as easy as that. And as I say, do that on each of your taps. Now, once you've done that, you can actually leave your pump on because on each of your taps, you've got something called a micro switch, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it. So it's dead easy. The only time you need to turn that pump off is when you run out of water. Um, now, one thing I'd personally recommend is when, you're, when you've when you just got hooked up on site, you've filled up your water, um, I'd personally recommend purging and priming the system as soon as you're on site and you've done and you've filled up with water. Um, purge the water on hot first, then cold, because that will, what that will do is it will prime the boiler as well as priming the, the tap itself. Um, because once you've got water in the boiler, you can then turn your heating on, which I'll show you how to do shortly. And that, that will ensure that there's water in there that can be ready to be heated. Now, as I say, that's the first thing you do on site when you pull that water in and then you turn your heating on. What that will ensure is the, water, the boiler has got chance to then start heating that, up, that water up. Now, naturally, the boiler in this isn't going to be instant hot water. It is going to take 30 to 40 minutes because it's, it's heating 10 litres of water. So with that in mind, do that uh, as the first thing that you do. So then by the time you've got everything else sorted in the van, your water should be coming out nice and warm. Now, coming back up to the panel, since we've just been talking about heating, we'll go over the control panel for your heating. So all you'll need to do is, using the button in the middle, click that on. And you can see that anything that you want to activate is below the line. Firstly, you've got your vehicle's temperature. So click that, and then using the dial, you can flick through the option. This can go up to a maximum of 30 degrees. Click that in if you want to select it. Next, you've then got your water temperature. So you've got the option of eco, hot, or boost. Eco is approximately 40 degrees. Now, you'll be running that uh, if you're having a shower. Uh, hot is approximately 70 degrees. Uh, you'll be doing, you'll be using that the majority of the time when you're washing your pots and pans. And then finally, boost will concentrate on heating the water rather than the heating um, in the vehicle. Um, and it will just, as I say, it will concentrate for about half an hour or so on really heating that, that water up. Um, the majority of people will do that initially just to try and get that water up to temperature as quickly as possible, especially if it is cold. Uh, now, coming back, You've then got your fuel, so you've got a few options to fuel this. You can either run um, the heating system off gas, you can run it off mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric, mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric, EL1, which is purely one kilowatt electric, or EL2, which is purely two kilowatt electric. Now, if you're on a site, nine times out of ten, you're going to run it off EL2. Certain sites will limit you with the amount of power that you have, especially when you go abroad, so you may be forced to run it off EL1. If that is the case, I personally recommend sticking on, it on a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric or purely gas, because a vehicle of this size is going to really struggle uh, on heating it with just one kilowatt electric. Uh, now, if you're wild camping, just stick it on gas, or if it is especially cold and you are on a campsite, um, stick it on a mixture as that will just allow the temperature to get up um, the quickest. 
Uh, now back we go, you've then got your fan option. Now at the moment, because I've not got anything selected, it's just giving me the, the option of vent, which will ventilate and recirculate the air in the vehicle. When you have got one of your heating um, options selected, that will then give you the option of high or boost. Um, high will, is obviously a more intensified uh, fan, which will blow around the vehicle. And boost, as I mentioned, for the water will just work vice versa. So instead of heating the water, it will focus on heating the vehicle itself. And again, that lasts for about 30 minutes. And then coming down to the panel down here, you've got an option for a timer. So you can set a timer should you want to. You've then got the time, so you can actually change the time on this panel. And finally, you've got your settings panel or settings icon. Click that. And all the way in here is your reset button. There's a couple more things, but the main thing that you need to know is the reset. Now, you need to know this if you ever get an error code on the panel. Um, now, this often occurs when you have, for example, tried to run the heating system with a fuel that you haven't got. So say, for example, uh, right now I try and run the heating system off gas. As I've no gas supplied in the vehicle or hooked up, um, it will try and heat it. And then you'll get an error code that will pop up here. Uh, and shut down the system. It's basically um, protecting the system. Now as soon as you get an error code, as I say, it'll flash on the screen and you'll need to go into that settings panel to reset the panel. Now you'll click reset, you'll also click preset, so just follow it, click click and click again and then it'll say initializing and the screen will flicker and then it'll come back on uh, after about 20 seconds and it'll look like it's done the job. However, a full reset will require you to wait a full 20 minutes, so just bear that in mind. Please ensure that you wait 20 minutes before interacting with the panel again. Uh, on the control panel as well, one thing to mention is you should always turn this off uh, before disconnecting anything. So hold this in and eventually that will say off. So say for example, if you're running it off electric and before you turn the panel off, you remove the electric from the van, you get an error code. Might, now you might not notice initially, but when you come to use the van again, the error code will still be on there and you'll have to reset it. So we'll just get you um, out of that issue of when you come to, to use it next, having to reset the panel. Now below the control panels, you've then got your space for a telly, uh, along with obviously all the bits here to, to connect it. You've also got some USBs here. And as I mentioned before, you can see that you've got some lights, which are for the inside of the vehicle. And these ones are your porch lights, as well as your awning light and your door light on the outside of the vehicle. You've then got your electric step button here as well. Um, now, uh, although it will not retract automatically when you turn the engine on, you will get a piercing um, alarm, uh, which will indicate that your step is still out. So obviously just make sure that that is in um, before traveling. Now on all of your windows, you can see that you've got blackout blinds that pull up and fly screens that pull down. Now obviously, when traveling, you want to make sure that these are open to improve your visibility. And what I'd personally recommend is when you are storing the vehicle to store all these blinds in the down position. As you can appreciate, this is just folded card at the end of the day or folded paper. So over time, if you leave these up for a long period, and this especially goes for your skylights throughout the vehicle, uh, these folds will begin to lose the memory and the shape, um, so which will consequently when you put them down they'll start bunching up and getting caught so i'd recommend leaving everything open when you're storing the vehicle now you've actually got a side window on this particular window which will open up for when you're traveling but the other windows on the other side for example these hinge out and you do that by simply turning these plastic points and then pushing the window out like so and as you can see, that's just on a ratchet system and it just connects into place. So bring it all the way down, push it all the way up, and then you can then tighten it into position. You can in fact have these on venting as well, should you want to, um, which will just allow a little bit of airflow through um, the window. Um, but when you're traveling, you pl please ensure that these are closed tightly, along with your skylights in the ceiling. Now coming away, you can see that your lounge is located at the front with your drop down bed, which is directly above that. Now to drop the bed, it is dead simple. You've got two options. You can either drop it halfway and get a ladder up to it, or you can drop it 
all the way down should you want to. If you're dropping it all the way down, what you'll need to do is remove these back cushions. They can sit at the front or uh, in the bathroom area. And then you can drop the table. To drop the table, all you'll need to do, might be difficult with one hand, but I'll give it a go. Just need to pull up on this table and then press it down. I can't do it with one hand, I've given it a go. Uh, but simply pull it up, push it down, and that will drop into position. And it will ensure that this area is nice and clear, ready for the bed to drop. As you can see, I've just done that quickly and dropped the table into position. I'll remove the cushions now for you. And with your cushions removed, you're ready to drop the bed. Now to drop the bed, located in here, in this drawer, you can see that you've got your bed controls. You've got your little key here, which simply slots in and simply turn that to activate the bed. Once you've done that, click this button and that will allow you to drop the bed down. Now all you'll need to do is just hold this into position. It will stop automatically when it's at its lowest point. As you can see, it's now at its lowest point and you can ready to climb on the bed. Underneath here, you've also got some ladders, as I mentioned, if you're having it halfway, so it's easy to, to get up. And you can also see that you have got some netting if you are having it at that halfway point. And just like that, the bed is up and you can return to your lounge. Now, before I set this back up into a lounge, the great thing with these vehicles is they've got a traveling seat uh, located under the two bench seats at the front. So you've one on this side, one on this side. Dead easy to use. All you'll need to do is remove these cushions and then using this uh, this handle here, you can actually see the seat belt that's poking through now. Uh, you just twist this handle uh, like so, and that will release the mechanism so you can pull the seat up and face forward, which I'll do for you now. And just like that, it reveals the pop-up traveling seat. And as I say, you face forward with this seat. It's the exact same underneath here. Now to turn this into a comfortable seat, because you're not gonna be wanting to sit on that, um, simply use these cushions this cushion base which was originally located in this area this will pop onto here and then using one of the seats backrests that can slot on uh, uh, into here which I'll do for you now and you can see just like that I've popped the lower cushion in along with the backrest and the seat belt just comes round ready for transit and just like that we're back to your lounge now before I move on from the lounge area, one thing I did forget to mention, that on your drop down bed, uh, you do have a manual override should you ever want to um, override the system, say for example the motor goes or, or anything like that. Now you can see that you've got this black uh, point here, along with this here. What you'll need to do is you can look through here to guide the manual override through here. That simply slots into here and then you can wind the bed up or down depending on the situation. Now a lot of people say, you know, what's the uh, likelihood of this happening? Um, what tends to happen with these beds is if you do ever, you know, if anything goes wrong with them and the motor stops working, you tend to have blown a fuse. So what I personally recommend is taking a spare batch of fuses with you. So if anything does happen, you can simply replace the fuse. Now the fuses are generic, uh, you can just get them from Halfords, but just take some spare fuses, because worst case scenario, if the bed does get stuck, you can simply switch one of them out. Um, however, if all else fails, you can use the manual override, which as I say, just slots into here. Now your fuses, if you want to, repl to replace them, are actually located underneath the passenger seat, right at the front, just underneath there. And they're in a tray that you can then slide out should you need to. And the manual override, I'll just grab for you now. That's the manual override. As I say, that slots into there. And then you can wind it down or up, as I say, depending on your situation. So moving into the kitchen area, you can see opening up here, as I mentioned, you have got your up and down button for the drop down bed. We've also got your grill pan in here, um, but most importantly, we've got the vehicle's RCD breaker. So if the vehicle ever trips, you can come to this point um, and, uh, and and see what has tripped. Uh, now, what's quite handy on here, you've got a little test button where my thumb is there. Um, so if, for example, you're not getting any, any power in the vehicle, um, all you've got to do is simply click that test button and these will trip automatically. 
uh, or they should trip if you're getting power into the vehicle. Now, if you're not getting any power into the vehicle, these won't trip, uh, and therefore there's clearly a fault with the site, so the site may have tripped, or your hookup cable that you're using is faulty. Um, and it's a good uh, tester just to see whether it's your van that's at fault or the campsite. It'll just allow you to isolate the issue. Up at the top, you've got three burners, which are on gas, along with an oven and grill below. And then underneath here, you have another great bit of storage. Right on the end, there's some more storage in here. You can see that you've got some fitted sheets with this vehicle, along with a pigtail that I mentioned on the outside, some blue fluid in there. And there's where your manual override is in your cutlery drawer. Now, directly above here, you can see that you've got some valves at this in this top uh, cupboard. In here, these are called uh, isolator valves, and they allow us to isolate areas of the vehicle. I don't recommend turning these or messing with these. These are really just for the technicians who are working on the vehicle. And as I mentioned, they will allow us to isolate areas of the vehicle. Now directly above the kitchen area, you've got some more storage up here. And this vehicle has had an aerial fitted along with a motor home Wi-Fi system fitted. Now the motor home Wi-Fi, uh, I'll go through with you on the day. Please bring a SIM card with you if you've got this unit. Um, and all you need to do is just pop that into the back and that will fire up. But I'll show you how to do that on the day. Just move this box. As I say, your aerial is on the other side. To operate the aerial, you firstly need it to be on. So as you can see, as indicated by the green light, it is on. And this green light indicates that you're going to get good signal from this. There's a little switch on the top which will, act to, which will allow you to turn on and off the aerial. You might as well leave that on, as when you turn off your isolator button here, that will turn this off automatically. Now, if this uh, green button goes yellow, um, sorry, amber or red, uh, the signal is of course not the best. So you're really aiming for that to be green. To improve the signal, you can actually unscrew this, valve, uh, this uh, lock here and then push this up and this will extend the aerial's height and as I say, provide you with a little bit, uh, better signal. You can also turn this aerial and you'll also notice there's a little winder at the bottom here which will allow you to tilt the head of the aerial again to better your signal. But of course, before travelling off, please ensure that that aerial is down uh, and is not in the up position, um, so you're not hitting any trees on the way home. On the opposite side, you can see you've got your fridge, along with a bit of storage up here, which is also ventilated. Now, the fridge is a Dometic system, uh, sorry, a Thetford system, and it's a three-way fridge, um, which means there's three ways to fuel it, basically. You've got the option of running it off gas, electric, or your 12-volt leisure battery. So where you're going to use one, um, you're, if, you're, if you're wild camping, you'll run it, of course, off gas. If you're hooked up to electric, you're going to run it off 230 volt electric, of course. Uh, and if you're traveling, you'll run it off your 12 volt leisure battery. Now, a lot of people think that they can run this fridge off the 12 volt leisure battery when they're wild camping. That is not the case. Uh, if it was, you'd simply just burn um you know, or, or burn through all your power in your leisure battery, you'd be left with nothing. So it will only allow you to run the fridge off its off the 12 volt when the ignition's running. Because this vehicle has got a built-in alternator, which will send power directly from the engine battery when it's running, straight through to your leisure battery and to the fridge. Uh, so the only time you can um, you can run that is obviously with the ignition on, and then when you're wild camping, run it off gas. Now to turn it on, all you need to do is tap this button here, you can see that turns everything on. Using this square button here, hold that, and when everything starts flashing, using the arrows, you can flick through the options. Now the great thing with this fridge is it's got the A button, which will, stands for automatic, and that will automatically assign whichever fuel you've got to the vehicle. Click that to select it, you've then got the option of changing the temperature of the fridge, and again, click the square button to activate it, and then you're ready to go and your fridge will be on. I'll turn this off quickly just by simply holding it and turning it off and then you're good to go. Now within your fridge you've got your freezer up at the top, little freezer box and your fridge below. You can also buy more um, um, uh, more uh, plastic uh, infills here and slots to hold obviously condiments and things 
Uh, and if you wanted to, you can also buy more of these trays should you need to. Now finally, moving to the back of the vehicle, you can see that you've got your bathroom area. Now we've spoken obviously about prime your system on your taps. Uh, the main thing that we need to discuss is the toilet. Now I've told you obviously how to remove the cassette and empty it. Um, but before you do that, I made reference to the blade. The blade is this piece of plastic here, it's this silver piece. To open it, all you'll need to do is push it away from you, and to close it, pull it towards you. When the cassette is in use, push it away from you so all the waste can drop into the cassette. And once you've done that, click the blue button, which is just up there, and that will activate your flush. Once you've done that, and you flush the system, pull the blade back towards you. The reason you close the blade, uh, or there's two reasons really, the main reason being is it stops any odours from escaping uh, from the cassette, uh, but two, and more importantly, is it just it gets you into the habit of having that cassette clo uh, this, this closed, so every time you go to remove the cassette to empty it, you don't run into the issue of it jamming. Now as I mentioned, your flush button is just located up here via the blue button. Uh, you will need your pump on for that to activate. Uh, so bear that in mind uh, and then when this is uh, ready to empty you'll get a little red switch uh, oh, sorry a little red light on here to indicate that you need to empty the cassette you've also a great bit of storage in here got a toilet roll holder in here along with a bit of storage as well as here up at the top directly above here you've also got one of your skylights all you need to do to open this is press this button in slide that back and then latch it into position you've got blackout blinds and fly screens on these as well and then to seal it into place simply pull it forward let that latch into position and then you're good to go on the other side is your shower uh, and you can see you've also got a hanging rail here if you're hanging any towels or any wet coats or anything like that which is quite handy um, now just be mindful about uh, standing on this uh, for a long period um, it's not too bad obviously when you're taking a shower but if you are storing any, anything in here you've just, just got to be careful because you don't want to crack the shower base they are quite delicate so just bear that in mind now to seal off the bathroom from the front you've got this tambo door currently it's just on a latch simply pull that latch off and that will slide and connect via the magnetic strip like so and that will just divide the space and it'll also act as a bit of a changing area should you need it moving to the back you've also got a three pin uh, socket here along with your bathroom lights and this particular vehicle has got a winter pack in it now as i mentioned on the outside um, the the tank is under slung the wastewater tank that is so it could potentially free, freeze now this vehicle has got a heated wastewater tank turn that on all you need to do is select that and that is 12 volts um, so that will that should obviously keep that area nice and warm and stop it from freezing um, but if you in really cold conditions I personally still recommend leaving that tank open just to ensure no water um, remains in there because say for example this does um, fail uh, you're obviously going to get frozen water in the system so, so just bear that in mind in the back you've got a really good bit of storage you've got some of your scatter cushions in there along with your hanging rail and on the other side you can see You've got a little bit more storage with these pull-out drawers. Finally, you've got this sliding door, which again connects via a magnet. And in here is where uh, your garage is. Um, one thing to mention is in there, it is heated and insulated, so don't worry about that in being cold. Um, it'll be nice and warm for you. It should be the same temperature as it is in the vehicle. And that concludes the handover video on the Bursa Liseo TD680G. I hope you enjoyed.